Hey everyone, and welcome back to another bonus exercise in Practical CSS Grid. In this exercise, we're gonna be talking about how to create a common design trope of the breakout style in the article body. As you can see here, we have our finished product, and it's just an article that it has a centered column of text. And inside of that, the markup is going to just be a, a div inside of it. And we're gonna have this cool gallery style that breaks out of our content column with no margin hacks, nothing weird in CSS. And it's gonna be fully fluidly responsive out of the box with zero breakpoints in the code. Uh, and as a bonus in our bonus exercise, we're going to create a gallery style as seen here to go inside of that breakout area. So let's go ahead and dive into the code. We have a starting point, uh, just as we do in most of the exercises. In this case, we have a main element that has a class of article body. We have a div uh, inside of that that has a class of full width, which is going to apply the full width styles, and a class of gallery, which is what we're gonna to use to hook in our gallery styles. And then down below, we have a whole bunch of paragraphs that are just lorem ipsum over and over again, just so we can see what things look like with the full page. So down here we have our article body and our gallery, and we're going to, just like we've done in the past on our container element, have it be display grid, again, switching it over from a block level flow to a grid level flow. And then we're going to specify our grid columns. In this case, we want two columns on the left and the right hand side that are gonna be our gutters for our story. And we're going to have one column down the middle that is our main area. So we're gonna do that with grid template columns. And just to start off with, we're gonna set it to two rem, one fr, two rem. So that's going to give us a centered column of flexible text with two rem margins on the left and right for, for uh, lack of a different word. So let's go ahead and refresh. Let's go to the uh, start HTML. As you can see now, all of our uh, children elements are flowing from left to right through our columns. That is not what we want this to look like. So we're going to specify that all of our children inside of article body are in the second column, starting at column line two. So we're gonna say article body, and then we're going to use the direct child uh, uh, combinator, which is that uh, greater than sign there. And that's going to specify the first level of children inside of article body uh, should have this applied to it. And we're gonna say grid columns, and we're just gonna uh, call it two. And that's going to start this at grid line two in the columns and then let it flow into one span grid cell. As you can see, we now have a full width section in the middle that has two rems on either side of margins on the page. Those two columns are specifying there. Let's go ahead and pull up our grid inspector. And you can see we have, let's darken that up a little bit. We have a left column and a right column and that centered column. This is too wide of a content area, however. So let's specify that we want to have this set at a character limit for how long our lines should be. Because it's, depending on font size, very, very hard to read long, long lines of text. So in our article body, instead of 1FR, we're going to specify a min-max value that is going to be between two sets of character limits. So we're going to say min-max, parentheses, and we'll have a minimum of about 25 CH, the CH unit being a number of characters in the current font, so, uh, font size. Those characters are represented by the zero of the font. And then we'll say about 100 CH for the maximum length of our paragraphs inside of this. So let's go ahead and go back and refresh the page. And now you can see over here on the left-hand side, we have uh, a centered column inside of our grid, but our grid is not taking up the full width of the page anymore. And to change that, we're going to change where the squishiness lives in our template. I really like Jen Simmons uh, recently has been talking about the variable squishinesses of responsive design. And so if you remember, we had originally our FR unit being our content column, uh, but I'm gonna change that to be our left and right hand margins uh, will become one FR by changing these over. So that's going to allow the extra white space to be equally distributed on the left and the right hand side with the middle column having this harder flexibility between those two values. We'll save that in. Now we're gonna have a full width area here with a one FR, one FR left and right hand column. And then the middle column is going to be at a specific range of character units. So you can see now when we go to 
uh, responsive sizes. The left and the right hand columns automatically size down until they go completely away. And then this middle column is able to flex smaller and smaller until it reaches 25 characters long, which for most responsive sizes will take care of everything that we need it to take care of. So now that we have our content column set, we need to specify a way to let our gallery, our full width section of this page, span out to take up all three columns. So we're gonna go back into code and we're going to specify a full width class. And on this class, we're going to give it grid columns. But instead of saying from grid column one to grid column four, we're actually gonna do it from beginning to end by using a negative grid column value. This only works in explicitly stated templates, not in uh, automatically created uh, rows. But we can say grid column, we want to go from grid line number one through negative one, and negative one is the first line going the reverse order of our grid. So we'll save that in. And now as you can see, those images are full width minus the margins left and right that are automatically applied to the body by the, the user agent style sheet in Firefox. So now we're going to specify that we want this gallery to be a special type of gallery on the page. And so we're gonna do that with grid as well. We're gonna move into our gallery styles. And we're going to, again, make this a grid context by display grid. And this just shows you can have grids inside of grids inside of grids all the way down if you need to. And then we're going to specify, much like our first bonus exercise, an asymmetric grid to allow for this to have a big image on the left and then some smaller images on the right. So we'll have this be grid template columns of 2FR, 1FR, 1FR just like we had in, uh, in that asymmetric promo exercise. And then instead of our grid template column uh, rows being specifically those FRs, we're going to allow them to be automatically sized, thus keeping our aspect ratio in our images. So grid template rows of auto and auto, which I believe is the default for our rows, but I just want to explicitly state it so that it can be uh, a little bit easier to understand in the future. So we'll save that in and we should see a change. It's not gonna be exactly what we want, but now you can see just like in our promo exercise, uh, it goes through the rows and then automatically is going to try to add the next one down here. So we need to span our, uh, our, our images, our first image and our second image in the right way. So we'll do the grid template areas again, and we're gonna change names on this one. We're gonna have it be main image, second, Help if these were in quotation marks because that is important the first time around. Keep things lined up. We've got main image again spanning that and we'll do third and fourth. And these won't matter because we actually don't need to specify them in our code. But we're gonna go ahead and say uh, for any image inside of gallery, gallery image that is nth child one, we will have this be grid area main image and for our second gallery image nth child two we'll specify that that's going in that second keyword so grid area second now we'll see something closer it won't be perfect yet you can see we now have this white space down here but if we open up our grid inspector in firefox dev tools you can see we now have a full width gallery here you can see that um, this is now spanning those two, but technically it only appears at the top. Um, there we go. Because it can't actually span down to that other area. And we can turn on our area names to show that main image is actually the first two. And so our image is trying to maintain its aspect ratio. All the images want to maintain the aspect ratio. So we need to go in and specify that for all of our areas, we want them to align stretch. So the default is actually not align items stretch, it is align items auto, which for most elements is going to stretch the height, but for explicitly um, images and other and objects and stuff like that that have an aspect ratio built in, uh, an intrinsic aspect ratio, we need it to be stretch itself. So we're gonna say align items, we want all the items to align stretch instead of auto. And that's going to stretch the height. And as you can see, it's also stretching 
uh, the way that cat is appearing. It's squishing it in an unfriendly way. So we're also going to come in and we're going to specify for all of our images, we want them to have gallery image and object fit. And that's going to be like your background uh, size, cover, contain, percentages. We're going to specify this is going to be object fit contain. And we're going to give each of them a background color as well. In this case, it'll just be black so that we can kind of letterbox this in. So now when we save that in, you can see the image's aspect ratio is the same, and we have this kind of letterbox top and bottom black background. And that's, by default, object fit has object position of center center. So it's going to allow the image to be centered in this area. And if we had certain sizes on the right-hand side and we weren't respecting their aspect ratios, we'd get some letterboxing on the right as well. But it all ends up working out, and we do probably want a grid gap in here as well. So let's go ahead and give a grid gap to our gallery grid gap, and we'll give about one rem of space all around. So now we have kind of a classy uh, gallery view. Now, if we had more images, we could very easily have switched it instead of being uh, one big one at the top right, we could have it be two small ones, we could have four over there instead. Uh, we could have these be aligned at the bottom. Any number of things are possible just by changing out some values in our grid template. Uh, which is an interesting mechanism for creating new media flows inside of your articles. And again, all this works very well responsively. Uh, you might want to change your gallery to a different look and feel for mobile uh, instead of the, the uh, kind of asymmetrical gallery, but it all kind of just flows pretty evenly throughout. So we have a squishy center column of text. The squish is slower than the uh, FR units on the left and the right hand side. And then inside of that, we allow for a full width breakout area for an interesting gallery layout. You could use this for a block quote. You could use the style for just a standard image with a caption. There's a lot of different applications that you could do with a breakout stripe in the middle of your articles. So play around with a few different ways that you can possibly use this breakout style. I uh, use that full width class on some different things. You can put background colors, background images, uh, any number of things that you might need to add as an extra additive effect to your articles. And we'll see you in the next exercises.